CRP is something that rheumatologists frequently use, whether we're talking about rheumatoid arthritis or lupus or systemic sclerosis in order to determine the disease severity. In the census trial, the patients with uh, systemic sclerosis interstitial lung disease, the tendon had reduced the rate of decline in forced vital capacity over 52 weeks. Typically, an elevated CRP has been associated with a greater rate of decline in forced vital capacity and higher mortality. So the purpose of this study was to assess the effects of Nitinib in subgroups of patients based on their baseline um, CRP. So these patients had to have early systemic sclerosis. So they could needed to have non-Raynaud symptoms for less than seven years. Typically, Raynaud's occurs for a much longer period of time and is not associated by itself with severe disease. And these patients uh, um, had to have more than, just had to have 10% or more fibrosis of the lungs on a high resolution CT scan. And these patients were assigned to either placebo or natendinib. The rate of decline in the force vital capacity per year uh, was assessed and the proportion of patients with an absolute increase in force vital capacity of greater than or equal to 3%, which is a minimally clinical um, uh, difference, and absolute changes in the baseline um, modified rod and skin score. So that's looking at how thick um, the skin was at week 52 was uh, looked at in those patients who had a normal CRP at baseline and those patients who had an elevated CRP at, at baseline. It turned out that when we look at the, the good randomization that those patients who were in the attended group and the placebo group had equal, oh, equal numbers who had an elevated CRP. And if we look at the difference in the normal CRP and the elevated CRP group, uh, what we see is that uh, a greater percentage of uh, patients had diffuse cutaneous systemic sclerosis who had that elevated CRP at baseline. And they also had a higher mean modified rodin and skin score. So meaning the patients with the CRP, again, had, had, had worse lung disease and also worse uh, skin disease. Not surprising, the adjusted annual rate of decline in the forced vital capacity in the placebo group was numerically greater in patients with an elevated CRP. So those patients who continued on their background therapy and had an elevated CRP, they tended uh, to do worse. The effect of the nitentinib uh, versus the placebo on reducing the rate of decline in forced vital capacity was numerically more pronounced in those patients who had an elevated CRP. So what we saw was that whether they had a normal CRP at baseline or an elevated CRP, natendinib worked to slow the rate of decline in forced vital capacity. But those patients who had the elevated CRP tended to respond better. So if we're looking at our patients when they're in the clinic and we're trying to figure out who we should use natendinib, it certainly, based on my interpretation of this data, should be those patients who had an elevated CRP. I think that most rheumatologists right now are, are using mycophenolate mofetil to treat patients with systemic sclerosis and, and interstitial lung disease. And then if that doesn't work, we will go to rituximab. So this abstract looked at patients with systemic sclerosis and interstitial lung disease, but it wasn't a uh, uh, randomized and so that these patients were start on one or the other and there doesn't seem to be um, a rhyme or reason as to, as to how they were randomized. But there were two groups. There was group A that was on rituximab and then group B was on mycophenolate mofetil. And the, this was for a, a period of about 12 months and the patients on rituximab received a, a total dose of 1.35 grams. These were primarily female in their um, mid 40s, had had systemic sclerosis for an average of 6.3 years and the ratio of diffuse to localized scleroderma was 1.3 to 1. In group B that received the mycophenolate mofetil, they received this for 12 months at a total dose of 10.6 grams Again, mostly in their uh, 40s, female 91%, duration of, of scleroderma of 7.1 years, and a diffuse uh, to localized 1 to 1.3. So what was looked at was the time course of decline in the force vital capacity, change in the DLCO, 
change in the modified Rodman skin score, changes in the activity index, and cardiac rhythm and conductivity disorders were assessed. If we look at both A, groups A and B, the therapies, both therapies, the rituximab and the mycophenolate were associated with a significant decrease in the uh, modified Rodman SID score. So that both therapies worked when we look at changes in the skin. And in the mycophenolate group, there was a reduction in the number of patients who had cardiac abnormalities and conduction disturbances. Changes, however, in the force vital capacity were only seen in the rituximab group. And, and certainly in my opinion, they were significant in that rituximab, it was associated with a 10% improvement in force vital capacity in a third of the patients. So if we're looking at these patients with systemic sclerosis and interstitial lung disease, if their, the primary driver of their disease is their interstitial lung disease based on this data, I would use rituximab. But if their primary driver of the severity of the disease was cardiac conductivity disorder, then I would tend to use mycophenolate. However, in taking care of patients like I do every day, what was seen in the study was that mycophenolate was not well, very well tolerated and rituximab was much better tolerated. So that I think if I'm looking at these patients, really I'm going to be determining what is their primary driver of disease. And then based on that, choose either uh, mycophenolate or rituximab. <laughs>